Well, so far, when sequencing, we've been recording directly to the linear phrase tracks. Now, some people will prefer to work in a different way. It's possible to record into patterns, and each song contains 100 patterns. Okay, well, there's the main sequence of display. To get into pattern record, press this button here, marked pattern. And you can see pattern numbers are shown. And there are 100 patterns within each song stored with the song. And you can name your patterns as well. So the idea is you can create songs by chaining together a series of different patterns, much like working with a traditional drum machine. Only, of course, in this case, we can record all 16 MIDI channels of information to each pattern. So I've named four patterns here drums, piano, bass, and synth. And they're just simple four bar loops. Let's have a listen. There's the drums. Let's try number two, piano part. Number three is the bass. And finally, the synth sound. Well, I can put these patterns together to form a song, but I'm not too sure how I want to do that at this point. I'd like to experiment a bit. There's a very handy feature called real-time phrase sequencing, which allows me to assign each of those patterns to a separate key across the keyboard. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go to F1, Setup. Press it once and look for RPS. If it's not selected, then press F4. And the display shows a key name, in this case C2. And it will change depending on the key you play. Now, let's assign pattern 1, the drum pattern, to that key. Play the key. Well, still nothing happens. Well, that's because we're not actually in RPS mode. To do that, we switch the RPS button over here on. And now I should be able to directly trigger that drum loop from this key. Well, that works really well. So let's assign some of the other keys. Next key up to the piano part. Next key up, bass part. And finally, synth. OK, we may notice down here we've got various playback modes. Loop 1 will loop the pattern once it reaches the end of the pattern. And it's dependent on whether I hold the key down or not. Loop 2 will simply trigger from the key, start, stop, start, stop. Down here we can set up mute groups. This simply determines a group. Any two patterns within that group cannot be sounded at the same time. So I'm going to leave that off for the time being. And here we have trigger quantize. Well, OK, at the moment, each of the loops will trigger as soon as I play the keyboard, just like triggering samples from a sampler. But I could set up a real-time quantize so that the loop will only trigger when I reach the next beat or the next measure. So that automatically puts everything in time. So let's leave that on beat for the time being. And I can now try an arrangement using my four patterns. Let's see how it works. Try adding the synth. Bass. And piano. And finally, all four. Once you're happy with your real-time phrase sequencing, you can choose to record the overall performance into the sequencer. So let's do that. Back to sequencer mode. Make sure that the RPS light is still on, however. Record ready. Select the track you want to record onto. And in this case, I've given myself a one bar counting rather than the usual wait for note. So let's start recording. And that's my performance recorded. Rewind, playback. And you'll notice that if I switch off RBS at this point, 
it has no effect on the sound because what I've recorded is the note information that RPS created rather than the RPS itself.